Okay, in this video, we're going to try to calculate the energy of the simple ionic oscillator. So in this pendulum here, the total energy is made up by the kinetic energy and potential energy of the uh, pendulum at any point. And in this case, the potential energy is gravitational potential energy because the height is changing. So kinetic energy can be written as half mv squared, and the potential energy is mgh, where h is the height at some point where the velocity is v. Okay, we know that the total energy is a constant. Here we're assuming there's no dissipation of energy to surrounding or there's any there's no resistive forces. Let's take an example. Let's pretend the total energy is 100 joules. So and at, at some point the kinetic energy is 60 joules. And it's quite obvious here that the uh, gravitational potential energy must be 40 joules because it adds up to a constant which is the total energy which is 100 joules. Okay, let's take another example. Let's say the total energy is 100 joules and the kinetic energy is on half mv squared. So this must mean the gravitational potential energy is zero. So in other words, this is when it's going through the fastest in the equilibrium point and its height is at zero. Okay, so this means that we can work out the total energy by figuring out the highest kinetic energy. So we can work out the total energy by figuring out when it's going the fastest and figure out the kinetic energy at that point when it's going through the equilibrium. So we can write half m v max squared is equal to total energy. Okay, so Vmax we learned can be written as omega A, where omega is the angular frequency and A is the amplitude of the oscillation, which is not the same as the height. Amplitude is how far from the equilibrium has been displaced. Okay, so putting this in, we get an equation which is very useful and you should write down is the total energy is half m omega squared A squared. Okay, let's take another example. Let's say the total energy is 100 joules again, and this time the gravitational potential energy is 100 joules as well. So this must mean the kinetic energy is zero. So in this example, this is when it's at its maximum height and the kinetic energy is stopped, it's not moving. So we can figure out the total energy, the 100 joules, by figuring out the maximum potential energy, which in this case is the gravitational potential energy. So the maximum gravitational potential energy is at its maximum height, so you can write that as mg h max, where h max is the highest point that the pendulum can reach. So again, there's another useful equation to figure out the total energy. Okay, now that you've got two different equations of the total energy, either using the highest kinetic energy or the highest uh, gravitational potential energy, and you want to just apply it to any condition at any particular height or velocity, then you can just use this equation here. So you can jump back and forth between these equations. Okay, the same is true for mass on a spring system. The kinetic energy is half mv squared. But instead of gravitational potential energy, it's going to be elastic potential energy, which can be written as half times the elastic constant or spring constant times the extension squared. X here is the extension, but it's also the displacement from the equilibrium. And this total, uh, any point, must be a constant. Okay, so let's take an example. So let's say that the elastic potential energy is zero. Okay, so this is when it's not stretched, when it's at its equilibrium point. At this point, the kinetic energy is going to be a maximum. So we can figure out the total energy by figuring out the maximum kinetic energy, which is, again, half mv max squared, which can be written as half m omega squared a squared. Okay, let's take another scenario now. Let's take a point where it's stretched. So when it's most stretched, the kinetic energy uh, is going to be zero because it's stopped at that point, and the elastic potential energy will be its maximum. So at this point, we can work out the total energy as well by just figuring out the maximum potential energy. Maximum elastic potential energy is when half k x squared is the largest, and that's when it's half k a squared, the biggest displacement. x is the biggest displacement when it's equal to amplitude. Okay, so that equation here can be used to figure out the total energy. And once you've got the total energy, you can go back and figure out uh, any other uh, energy at any other particular point in time. Okay, in this example, we have a mass which is 0 0.20 kilograms, so that's your m there. It's attached to a spring with a spring constant of 30 newtons per meter, so that's your k there. The mass is initially at rest in its equilibrium position. The mass is struck by a stick such that it leaves the equilibrium at a speed of 1.2 meters per second. So this is Vmax, because when it's leaving the equilibrium, that's when it's going the fastest. And then it's going to slow down as the spring gets stretched or as it gets squashed. Okay, calculate the maximum displacement, so that's amplitude basically, of the mass from the equilibrium. Okay, so now that I've got V max and M, that means I can figure out the maximum kinetic energy. And that by figuring out the maximum kinetic energy, I've got an I've access to the total energy of the system. So half M V max squared, so I'm going to write half times mass 
which is 0.2 times the speed V max, which is 1.2 squared. So that gives me a total energy of 0.144 joules. Okay, now I want to figure out when it says maximum displacement. So when it says maximum displacement, all of that uh, kinetic energy is going to turn to elastic potential energy. So I can use this equation here with half K A, uh, A squared, where A is the amplitude. That is going to be what we're looking for. So that's equal to 0.144, which is the total energy. It's equal to half times the spring constant, which is 30 times A squared. Rearranging this, making A the subject, we get 0.98 meters as our amplitude, the biggest displacement from the center. Okay, in this example, I have a pendulum which is made by attaching a 5.0 kilogram mass to a light string. Calculate the minimum height at which the mass must be released from such that it passes h equals 0 0.10 meters with a speed of at least 3 meters per second. Okay, that's quite a lot to take in this, so it's good to annotate this onto the diagram. So what we want is at a height of h equals 0 0.10 meters, we want it to pass to that point, either going left or right, doesn't matter, uh, with a speed of three meters per second at least. Okay, so the question is actually asking us to figure out the maximum height, the minimum maximum height it must be released from. And so the word release gives us a clue. This is when it's not being pushed or anything. So that's probably the maximum height there, uh, which is released from such that it goes through that point with that speed. Okay, so to figure this out, we can use that. We can have to figure out the total energy that we need. Okay, so we'll use this equation because we've got the speed at some point and we've got the height at some point as well. So half mv squared, so half times mass, which is five times the speed one is three squared, three meters per second squared. And the height at this point is uh, mass times gravitational field strength times the height of 0 0.10 meters. So the total energy in the system we want is 27.41 joules. So what maximum height should we release it from so that the total energy is this much? So at, at its maximum height, it's going to be all gravitational potential energy. So I can use mgh max. So putting this in, so we've got 27.41 joules, that's what we need. We've got the mass and the gravitational field strength, and hit, rearranging this, we get the maximum height, 0 0.56 meters, that the ball must be released from, the pendulum must be released from, in order to go through that height with that speed.